Yeah, hi everyone, welcome again in this session related to the mobile phone security in forensics. Myself, Dr. Dibuil Singh Rathod, Associate Professor and the Associate Dean, School of Cyber Security and Digital Forensics, National Forensics Sciences University, which already have the status of institutions of national importance. Now, today I have a plan to discuss about the access control issues. And I would say that access control that deals with that does the person have a authorizations to access the resources or not okay so i would say that the access control issues they normally deals with two important concept of the internet that is called authentication and the authorization the authentications deals with it's talk about does the person is have a have a required credentials to access the, the resources or the system or not Take an example. Normally, we implement this authentication using with the help of the authentication process in the sense that we'll provide them the username and password and those person have the required username and password. That person is allowed to access the resources. Okay. And the authorization deals with the person who have the required username and password. Does that person who is already authenticated have a right or access right to access the resources or not that is called authorization i'll give you one more example suppose you know one day suppose at, at a night i am in my at, at my home and somebody will knock my door then i'll ask that who are you because it is it at this has happened at the midnight then i'll say who are you the person who is standing on the other side of a door he will say, I am Dr. Parag. Then I'll say that, give me the key. Then the Dr. Parag will say, suppose talks, you know, he gives his, his key. Key could be the name, the combination of the name and the mobile number that I already I have. Then I'll say that, oh, you are authenticated. Because Dr. Dr. Parag has given the no, no valid key. It could be the mobile number, the combination of his name that, that is given by me only. Then he will speak by standing on the other side of the door, that key. And I'll say that, yes, you are authenticated. It means that the person who is inside the home will come to know that who is on the other side of the door. So he is authenticated. Now suppose Dr. Prague will, I'll open the door and he will come inside my home and he will rush to my locker where I have put my all the cash. He's trying to open that lock. As soon as he's trying to open the lock, what I'll do is I'll I'll ask him, I'll, I'll, I'll stop him to do this. And I'll say that, Dr. Parag, you are authenticated, but you are not authorized to open my locker. That's it. Because he's not a person who is not authorized or he don't have the access right to open that locker. That's it. That is called authorization. So the person who is authenticated, that's it. But that person has to be authorized or have a privileges or have an access right to access a certain I would say the resources one more example you are a student I am a faculty member suppose if I log in in our campus management system I have a access I definitely I will got authenticated the the campus management system has given me a username and password in using the using that username and password I'll enter into the system when I, once I'll enter into the system I can open your examination paper and I can do assessment because I am authorized. I have the access rights. As in students, if you entered, if you uh, enter into the into the campus management system with your username and password, you are authenticated. But if you try to access those paper, you are not because you are not authorized. So these are the so for the access control issues, the authentication and the authorizations, they are a very main component. Today we are going to discuss about, you know, calling any of the activity without authorizations using the intent. So let's see. Now we know that there are there are four uh, important components of the Android. That is activity, content provider, broadcast receiver, services. And one more is intent, I would say. Now remember one thing, you know, activity that deals with the interface. We know that the content provider that is used to access any of the resources of the other application. Like if I want to access 
you know the the data from the database of the other applications i need to use a content provider broadcast receivers we know that if the application wants to send any message or broadcast any message then we normally use a broadcast receiver those those applications who are registered for that broadcast receiver may can that that may can receive that broadcast and that you can do using the the broadcast intent services we know that that runs in the background so these are the four different components now in the android applications we know that if the, if the one applications have you know they have the database and if the other applications wants to access that database you know then then that applications is it needs to search for the content provided url which will be registered with the other application moral of the story is if we have a two application and if the one application wants to access the activity of the other application if the one application wants to access any of the resources of the uh, resources of the other applications then that application you know that has to declare the permissions the second thing is you know if they want to access let's suppose database they need to use a uh, the content provider if they want to call the other activity they can use the 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 intent so the intent and the content provider they are very important con component if the activity wants to access the activity or the activity of the one application wants to access the the resources of the the other application now second thing is the component of the application should not be accessed by the other application obviously if they want to access either they can use the intent or either they can use the broadcast uh, sorry they, they can use the content provider in some cases the android application share its resources with the other application for example we can make a call by sending an intent to give such an access first the host application should declare a permission the second is the shared component should not disclose any secret data and the third one is the component should not threaten the user privacy okay and that we can control with the help of the intent and the content provider now today we are going to access uh, i would say we are we are demonstrate that if you don't you know keep care of internal intent external intent and and the broadcast broad, uh, the content provider in a right way if you don't apply the proper security me mechanism at the implementation level then what will happen because we know that using the intent the one activity can access the other activity and that could be the internal intent that could be the external intent the second thing is the content provider using the content provider you can access any of the resources of of the target applications so the intent and content provider whenever you deal with these two important component you need to take a great care so let's see that well, let's will will back to our, our practicals and we'll try to open our applications and I, what i need is i also need the center so we have two things in front of you so this is what our application is i'll open the diva now inside the diva let me move into the access control issue part one now when you click on it just read the the objective you are able to access the api credentials when you click the button you try to access the api credentials from the from outside the application the second thing is component of an applications can be accessed from other applications or the user if they are not properly protected the components such as activities services content providers are prone to this now what they are trying to discuss is this is what one activity now if i want to access if i'll click on it i'll i'll move into the uh, the second activity so there are two activity the first one is as you can see on the screen is view api credentials when i click on it you can move into the second credentials that is called the the vendors api credential so we have a two activity it means that when you move from one activity to other activity obviously the first activity which you can see on the screen which have the button is called view api credential that will call the other activity using the intent obviously now take an example now now suppose it means that if i want to reach to this vendor api credential activity i have to first click on the view api credential activity now somebody says that sir without clicking this activity is it possible that can i call the second activity directly i'll say yes it is possible okay now how dangerous it is take an example you have of uh, you have a lock screen or uh, i would say 
you know you have most of the mobile phones they have a screen through which you can either enter the pin number or either you can you know you know draw the pattern and through which you can move into the main activity of your mobile phone now there are some of some uh, i would say the applications somebody says that i want the customized lock screen in my mobile phone is it so that customized lock screen is ultimately apk file that is android file only so suppose somebody will download that uh, you know customized lock screen applications from the internet take an example and it will display one lock screen in front of you and thus in that inside that lock screen you can and you can enter the pin number or you can draw the pattern and if it is correct you can move into the main screen of your mobile phone so remember one thing that application which you have downloaded that is called the customized lock screen api uh, or the applications have the lock screen or the pattern activity in front of you like this take an example like this now when you enter the correct pin number or pattern you will move into the other activity now suppose if somebody will find the way to call the second activity directly then what will happen then what will happen is without entering the pin or drawing the pattern you can call the second activity directly this is what we are trying to discuss today that is called the access control okay now for that what we have to do is we just move into the sentoku okay now inside the sentoku let's let's well, first we'll see because here the one activity is calling the other activity it means there is a involvement of the intent in between so let me try to see the manifest file so i'll do one thing i'll i'll already inside the let me move into the download folder because we have already i i'll just i'm trying to open the android manifest.xml file so here we normally have a cd diva we have already unzipped and i'll say ls here we have uh, the xml file now let let me try to open the xml file cat android xml file okay now the problem is we are not able to view the xml file is it uh, we already discussed why we are not able to to access uh, can view this xml file because if you check like suppose take an example if you check we have this diva folder directory which is unzipped we just unzipped our diva dash beta dot apk file and this is the unzipped version of your apk file and we know that the unzipped is not a i would say it's not a decompilation of your apk file and that's why we are not able to read the android.xml file we can do one thing we can use apk tool then because we know that the apk tool that is used to decompile your entire apk file into this smally code so we can write apk tool just a minute let me check so we'll just write ap k tool and uh, it's a d that is for the decompilations and we need to give the name of the our apk file that is diva dash beta let's see so he has started the decompilation we'll wait for a second as we have some error also we'll do one thing we'll just write ls whenever you do, do ls the apk file normally you know generate the directory with the same name of your uh, of your android application so he has created a diva beta we'll just try to move into diva beta and try to find try to find our xml file ls oh, oh i am not able to find the android.xml means my apk tool is not able to generate the complete decompiled code code from the diva beta.apk let's see inside what do we have in the chapter no i don't think that we have the apk file oh sorry we don't have the xml file manifest file i don't have it in the sense that in this case i am not able to get the complete decompilations using the apk that may happen also now what could be the another way another alternate could be we can use a drawer uh 
modules to view the apk file then we can do one thing let me go from this one suppose if you fail if you try it and if you fail you can try other alternate ways to to use the apk file i'll do one thing uh, for that i need to use a browser then i'll say that will back to over here only Mm, let me for that we need to first see that I need to use the ADB devices I need to connect with okay I am already connect with this one so let me do one thing let me start the browser enable our server and here it is uh, the port number is I think it's a 31415 so what we need to do is browser and forward sorry tcp column 3141 tcp column 31415 just a minute i have just a minute i have to check I did the mistake is I think we should write first we need to start the browser then I should not write ADB forward TCP I think we already wrote this we just need to change this one instead of the browser I need to write the ADP okay and then browser console Browser console connect. So now we are already connected with uh, the browser. Now let's me check uh, the modules that we have. So let me open the modules, and here in the modules we can see what is a module to check our. I would say manifest file. Okay, we have this one. Is that is called the app dot package dot manifest app dot package dot manifest so we can write just a run app dot package okay I'm doing some mistake oh it's app dot package I'm seeing Oh, it's not run. I, I did the mistake. It's I should write run app dot package dot manifest and uh, checker dot machine dot Okay, so we are not able to. We are able to get uh, the manifest file easiest way in the easiest way. Okay, now let we'll see. We'll try to check that. Do we have the access control activity or not? Okay, so I'm able to find this uh, access control activity that is called the jacker.assume.diva dot access control dot activity now just below this what i'm trying to find it i can find that there is also one more activity that is called jacker.assume.diva api credits activity and this activity has one intent filter and this intent filter is looking for an action is called view underscore CREDS. Okay, so this is what the action in the sense that uh, this activity that is called the API creds activity. This activity will uh, that anybody can initiate, is it? Because using the action is called action dot view dot uh, creds. Now, let, now let we'll do one thing. Let me open the one more terminal. And let me move into the downloads. Sorry. And let me move into the diva. And let me open that uh, the source code of it. So for that we can use a GD GUI and classes dash dex dot char. So now this is what it's available in front of you. Now we'll do one thing. We'll try to see where is our access control activity. So I think this is what the access control activity. Now let's see the code. Now what this code is doing. This is called the access control activity. And uh, 
here we have the view api credentials this may this uh, method could be called when we click on that button and here what he has done is he has created the intent object of the intent and here he has he has wrote that the object of the intent dot set action okay so when you click on that button what it will do oh no they will they will fire the action is called action dot view underscore cards and what this action dot views underscore cards we already seen that we can see here in this here that this action is it it is registered with uh, the api credits activity okay in the sense that in the sense that so you know when you click on the button that button will call this method and this what this method will do it will create the intent and this intent intent is fired with the action is called the view underscore credits and this uh, action is got registered with the activity name is called api credits activity and let we'll check this activity uh, the api credits activity i think it could be any of it uh, this is just a minute okay so we have this activity he is, is listed here okay and what this activity is normally do is trying to it just display the key username and password the key username and password okay so now what we are trying to do is we are trying to call that uh, the second activity as it without initiating the first activity so we'll do one thing we'll move here where into our i would say in the adb and let me open one more terminal okay and what we are we are trying we are we are trying to do is we are trying to i would say quick start our second activity that is quick start the second activity in the sense that we are trying to quick start uh, i would say which activity we are trying to quiz quick start the second activity that is called the api credits to activity is it without you know even initiating this the first activity so we are trying to to kick out the second activity without authorization okay so what we have to do is for that what we are going to do is we are going to you know first uh, do the adb shell so adb shell okay so we are in the root of our uh, i would say emulator now once we move into the adb shell you know there is one uh, i would say the concept is available is called activity manager so if you write em this is available so when you write the em you will find you know so many different options so using the activity managers you can you know do the different activities with uh, i would say with with your activity you can call the second activity any of the activity using any of the intent so what i am going to do is i am just going to clear it and here what we are going to write we are just trying to write am that is called the activity manager start that dash a and we are going to start the second activity using the intent registered intent and we know that what is suggest registered intent so we can open this one and this is what this is what our intent is so what i am going to do is i am going to take this intent okay and using this in intent i am going to quick start our second activity that is called api credits to activity so just moved here and i'll say paste now remember one thing before i'll press enter let's check that what do we have on the screen let me minimize this one so i don't have anything on the screen okay now what will happen is suppose when i entered what this will do is this will you know fire this intent and this intent has action is called view underscore credits and we know that this action is registered with the api credentials related activity so when you click on it when you click on it what will happen is it will starting the intent and you can just check on your in your on your android that the second activity has you can you can see it on 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 in front of you i think i have uh, i have used the wrong uh, intent let me check because he has started uh, the i would say he has started the activity of some uh, 
he has used the intent of some other activity. I think I did some mistake. Let me move back into my this one and let me check that which one is the right. Uh, okay, here is. I think I should use this intent. I have used this the 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 other intent that is called the crads two. I think I should use this intent only to cal to quick start that activity. I think I should move this one. Okay, and let me check here. See, the second activity has started. Without initiating or accessing the first activity, I can quick start the second activity. And this should not happen. At least the first activity, as it which you can see here, which you can see here, which one is? That is when I click on the view API credentials and, and you know this should pass some key and that key has to be authenticated into the second activity, then only the sec second activity should, sh should show the detail, some of the confidential detail. Here what will happen is, you know, they are calling the first activity, second activity through the first activity using the external intent, and which is always very dangerous. Now what we are trying to do is, we are trying to use the same practical using the Drozer. So let's we'll do it with uh, the Drozer. I am already in the prompt of the Drozer. So first let will uh, get the information about our package. So we know that there is one, just a minute, there is one uh, modules available is called package.info and uh, chakra.shim.diva. So what this will do, this will give us the list of the detail about the package. Now it, I can see that there are three permissions. One is a write external storage, you read external storage and there is an internet. So I'm not able to, okay, so there, these are only three permissions which uh, this package, app.package.info, it is extracted from the, I would say from the XML file, okay. So let's see that. Now what we are trying to do is, uh, we are trying to find the attack surface. So for that, we know that we already have one, uh, I would say the module that is called app.package.attack surface and we need to provide the chakar shim.tiva. Okay, so we, we will come to know that there are, I would say the three activity and one contained provider. Is it, but we don't know that is exported and one content provider is also got exported but the problem is we don't know what are the name of those publicly available activities so let we'll do one thing we'll try to run no we don't know that what are those publicly accessible activities so there is one I think if you check you'll find one package is called you know, we, our aim is to know that what are those publicly accessible activity. So, provider, okay, there is one, okay, there is one uh, package is called app.activity.info. So, let we'll try to see that how many activities are there. So, app.package.activity, oh, sorry, it is activity. So, dot activity dot info dash a and chakra.ashim.diva okay so these are the three activity okay and i think all those all these three activities are i would say that it's a publicly accessible now what we are trying to do is let we'll try to see that you know we'll try to see that i'm not even able to see that does this activity requires any permissions or not Okay, so what we'll do is let we'll take each of the activities and try to call those activities with the intent. Okay, so let we'll do one thing. How will you do this? You can just like you can like run. Uh, even if you write this a list, you can find that how do we start that activity. Then in the activity only, you can find one package is called module is called app dot activity dot start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same one is called app dot uh, activity as it dot start 
and here you need to provide the component flag and after that you need to provide your package name diva and here you need to provide uh, the name of the activity which we already have received so what we'll do is we'll take just a minute let me go up and try to take any of it let me take this one copy and paste it okay now when you click when you, whenever you entered you will find that the activity is already got uh, you know initiated let me do one thing let me again will move into the home page and let me try to call that activity okay when you click on it you'll find that see the activity is got uh, it's called then this should not happen so this is what the way you can do one thing you can test each of the activities and you can verify that that is there a way that the person can call any of that activity without any kind of authorizations or without any kind of authentication not will back to a presentation so here i wrote uh, the the steps that how can you you know uh, simulate the at the vulnerability attack on the vulnerabilities and how do you explode that vulnerabilities that i have shown here step by step so so this is what ultimate aim is to to discuss so what is the moral of the story is whenever you use a content provider or the intent to call your activity or any of the services or any of the broadcast receiver please see that that you should use a proper security mechanism so so you know it it, it should not be that anybody will come and can call the second activity without the author, authentication or, or the authorizations anybody can come and call uh, you know access your uh, user defined services or the broadcast receivers without without the, the authentications and authorizations i think this is enough for today thank you bye